Hey, what's happening, guys? Today, I want to talk a little bit about the Arduino IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. If you're just getting started in Arduino, then uh, this could be a little bit confusing for you to see. So what I want to do is kind of help you out a little bit here. And we're going to take all this that you see here and make it easier for you to understand. So let's get started doing that. Okay, we need to start out with the simple assumption that you already have the Arduino IDE installed on your computer. If you don't, just type Arduino IDE into your search and get it installed. Um, I can't help you with installing anything on your computer or any computer errors you might have because there's so many different operating systems, different computers, different ways things connect. It's just too much. So can help you with the programming but again another caveat here I am NOT a software engineer I am NOT a programmer I program out of necessity so while my stuff is guaranteed to work because you're gonna see it work it's probably not gonna be the most elegant or efficient way to do anything okay all right so here we have an Arduino program this is one we did the other day where it draws the uh, the rectangle on the screen the uh, the bar graph kind of thing so let's go up here and talk about the individual parts of the program and break it down again I'm not an expert programmer what I tell you will work I may miss out on a couple of uh, elegance points but we'll get the job done so first of all if you just create a new Arduino sketch this is what you're going to get. And that's where we're going to start. You're going to start with two subroutines, loops, whatever you want to call them. The first one is setup, and the second one is loop. I guess they're functions, is what they would have, they would be their functions, okay? So the first function we have here is setup. And if you notice here, it tells you this is going to run once. Then we have loop. And it's going to run repeatedly. And you can create more functions. Okay. We'll get into that later. But these two functions must be in your program for it to run. If it doesn't have it, it's not going to run. Now, the Arduino IDE, the Arduino coding, is, is based on uh, C++, I believe, which is very picky about its syntax. So, let's start out by writing a simple program. And we'll talk about the syntax and how it all goes together. So, you notice I put some space up here above the whole setup area. This is what I call my declarations area. So if you want to create a variable, an integer variable in this case, meaning a whole number, an integer variable called, I don't know, I can't use size, uh, integer variable called, LARP, I don't know. You can do that up here. Now, here is your first hint. Every single line, with a couple of exceptions, needs to end in a semicolon. If there is no semicolon, it's going to throw an error. See, for instance, what we can do here is we can actually save this. Uh, save file. Save, what are we going to call it? We'll call it uh, test August 4. Yeah, there's, there's an early, earlier error popping up there. Don't worry about it. Okay. So here we have our, our initial thing we've done. All we've done so far is create a variable. So if we click this little checkbox here and verify it, it's going to try and compile it here. And it should go just fine. I won't make you watch that. 
Okay, there we go. So it compiled just fine. Now, watch what happens if we remove semicolon. Go through our compile again here. It should go much quicker this time. That first time is always the slow one. See, and it gives an error. And you can roll down here. You can see what it is. It says expected comma or semicolon before void. So remember that. It needs to see that there. And here's something else as well. I mean, it goes along with this. You could type more things here. Because this is the end of the command, this, this semicolon. So if you wanted to create another variable, integer parp equals zero, you can do that as well. The compiler doesn't care how many things you place on a single line. It's simply cares that you have separated your commands with a semicolon whoops so those two on a single line and those two on these lines on individual lines all the same now there is a command kind of works along the same lines like say you want to create a constant for instance um, you're going to have say a buzzer on pin 4 what you can do is you can say dollar sign and uh, define or is it also define there we go dollar sign define and call it buzzer equal four or, I'm not quite sure if the equal sign needs to be there hang on one second please yeah I don't think that needs to be there just a space so let's make sure that it's going to work. And I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, no problem. So whenever the compiler sees this variable, or this constant buzzer here, it is going to know four. The difference between this command, define buzzer four, and this command, integer plark equals zero, is that buzzer four is a constant it can't be changed these are variables they can be changed okay so now what do we do when we get down here into our functions our setup function and our loop function well remember I told you how important the semicolon is just as important are these curly brackets and if you click on one curly bracket it'll show you where its partner is see how it it does that there. If you don't have a pair, watch what will happen. When we try and compile the program, it's not going to like this at all. Yep, yeah, see? Exit status one, expected semicolon, at end of input. So we need to put our curly bracket back so that the program likes it. The good thing is, is it pretty much won't let you send broken code to the Arduino. If it can't compile it, it's not going to send it. Then again, what you also have to remember is uh, garbage in, garbage out. Whatever code you put in is what the Arduino is going to do. All right. So now that we've gone here to our setup, let's create a couple of uh, blank lines for us to go through. Okay, what we can do here in this section is basically tell the Arduino how we need it to behave with its various pins, which as you know, can be inputs or outputs. So one of the things we can do, we can come in here and we can say pin mode, which is telling Arduino, listen up, this is how we want this particular pin to behave. For instance, we know that our buzzer is going to be on pin number four. So we can say pin mode buzzer is going to be an output and don't forget that semicolon now the other things that it can be are an input and an input underscore 
pull up. So those are, those are the things that we can let our pins be. Now, if you accidentally set one of these pins to an input and try and drive, say, an LED with it, you're not going to blow anything up. The LED might light a little bit, but basically it's just not going to work. So remember, the pins kind of default to an input state. So if you need an output, make sure you tell them an output. Now, the, another very useful thing you can do here is after you've told your pins how you want them to behave, is set them in their initial mode. So now we can say digital write buzzer low. The other thing the buzzer could be is hi. So what we've done in that so far here in our setup is we have told the compiler that a pin known as buzzer, which we set up up here as pin number four, will be an output pin. And then we set that output to zero so that when the program starts to run, the buzzer is not buzzing. There are other things we can do in here. For instance, if we're going to use the serial monitor, we need to tell it to begin. We also need to spell it correctly. Good Lord, Paul, you can't spell it all, can you? Serial.begin. And then pick a baud rate. I just usually go 9600. Now, we have communications to our serial monitor for our program. Just another useful thing that we can put in there. But just remember, everything that goes on here in this void setup is going to go on once. And anything that we declare up here is going to be used within the entire program. So now let's come down here and have a look at our loop, our main program loop. As you get a can guess from reading this here it is going to run repeatedly it is going to run over and over so it is going to remember the things that we've told it up here that larp equals zero plarp equals zero buzzer is set to four uh, pin four is an output it starts out low and we have a serial communications so now we can come down here and we can start doing different things um, for instance, we can begin by outputting our variables to the serial monitor. So we can say serial dot print, which will print whatever value that we put in here. For instance, if we want the value of our variable LARP, serial will now print the value of LARP. We can also say serial dot print line and print say the value of plurp we can also say serial dot print and put in here in uh, quotes hello and get some text there are many different things we can do here we don't want to get into all of that stuff right now. I just wanted to show you. Those are some of the things you can do there. You can also do the main logic of your program here. For instance, we can say if LARP is less than 1, Then we're going to put our brackets in here. If LARP is less than one, we can say B L A R P LARP increases increments. Okay. So now we should be able to run this or Compile it anyway. I don't have an Arduino hooked up for us to run it. But it's compiling the sketch. Oh, I've got an error. Serial. Serial. 
that need to be capitalized. That where I messed up. See, remember I told you the uh, syntax is incredibly important here. I don't think that's right either, but we'll find out in a second. Remember I told you this is my programming style. One moment, please. There we go. I think this all had to be capitalized. We'll find out here in a second. There we go. Say so it's all had to be capitalized. So now if I were to hook an, uh, an Arduino up to this, we'd be able to bring up the serial port. But there's nothing there, so you get the idea. <laughs> all right, guys, I want to show you one more trick in this video. This is probably the most useful one of all. If you come up here to help and go to reference, it's going to take you to this page which has all of the commands. And you can find whatever command that you're using or trying to use or whatever. For instance, here is our loop that we just talked about. You can click on it and it tells you after creating a setup function, the loop function does precisely what it does. It loops. But you can go through here and find out just about you know, anything you can dream up for the Arduino, they have the information there. All right, guys, I, I know you've been enjoying this Arduino Foundation series, and I hope this helps some of you who are just getting started with the programming end of it. If it does, I hope you give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons, and a big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.